Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to wish you a pleasant day. And I'm glad that you came to listen to my presentation on the digital twin approach for durability and reliability assessment edges. <clears throat> uh, this uh, approach of digital twin model was uh, applied to two bridges, one in Czech Republic on the right, and in Germany on the left. Uh, well, let's uh, describe what we mean by the digital twin model. It is basically a numerical model, but in this case it is closely coupled and uh, calibrated by advanced monitoring system. Uh, we are using system developed by Petschacher Consulting in Austria. And this system, in addition to the measurements of the structural deformations, allows uh, in long term allows long term measurements of the traffic. And then we can obtain the distribution of the traffic uh, through, through depending on the weight, or we can also detect the number of passes uh, by the individual vehicle over the bridge. Excel, number of axles uh, of a typical vehicle, and also the speed. Well, this system, of course, has to be calibrated. So this is shown on the photo in the middle, where you can see one of the one of the trucks with uh, known weight as it is passing the bridge. Important part of the monitoring system is the laser scanner, which is on the side, and it is uh, scanning, and detecting, uh, passing individual vehicles and also it can measure the speed of the vehicle and uh, the number of axes and their distance. Well, this information can be used or was used in this uh, situation. I mean, the information of the individual vehicles with their weight, uh, length and so on was then used uh, in numerical simulation as the individual trucks are passing the bridge as it is shown on this slide. And uh, we can use this information to calibrate the model. So in this uh, way, our digital twin is uh, calibrated and we can use it for the predictions of the structural life service life. Important durability issue for reinforced concrete is of course the corrosion of reinforcement and uh, our Durability model identifies these uh, important phases of this uh, model. First, it is the initiation phase. This is the time needed for the chlorides to propagate and reach the reinforcement depth. At that point, uh, the corrosion of the reinforcement starts. And we can then identify the following phases when the reinforcement cover cracks and when it is uh, and totally separates so-called spalling. Each of these phases, of course, increases the rate of uh, corrosion. That's the main uh, feature we want to capture with our model. We are not so much uh, considering or con concerned about small pieces of concrete uh, falling uh, from our structure. What is most more important is the fact that at each of these stages, we have an increase in the corrosion rate. And the corrosion, of course, reduces the reinforcement area. And uh, this, of course, affects the structural load carrying capacity. So this process is shown schematically on this uh, figure. Here you can see schematic description of a small structure with reinforcement. And because we know the distance of each reinforcement bar from the surface where we apply our condition of chloride concentration in this case, we are using a, a one-dimensional diffusion, or we are solving a one-dimensional diffusion problem of the chlorides, which also take into account the presence of cracks. So as you can see here, because there are some cracks due to the bending load or shear load, a crack develops. And at these points, uh, the chlorides can propagate faster. And that's why we can see here, denoted by this red color, increased level, level of corrosion. So this is a very effective model, which uh, can consider the corrosion uh, effect of, on the overall structural behavior in a very complex and large scale simulation, in a very effective way. 
So let me also briefly mention the concrete material model that we will be that we will be using in our study. So it's a fracture plastic material model. That means there is a part of the model which deals with cracking using Rankine criterion or the softening law. It is based on fracture mechanics. That means uh, the uh, fracture energy is an important parameter under the softening law, basically the area under the softening law. And uh, in order to have a, a mesh objective results, we are using the crack band approach to scale or softening depending on the size. In compression, we are using a plasticity based model with a Villa Menetre three parametric criterion, as you can see on the left bottom of the figure. And this surface first expands to simulate hardening due to compression, due to compressive stresses. And once the compressive strength is reached, we enter the softening regime, which is again calibrated on the element size using the crack band approach. We have successfully validated this model on various experiments, but the best validation is, of course, to participate in various uh, client predictions benchmarks. Here is an overview of some of the recent ones. Now let's go to our model or to our structure. This shows the model that we used for the Esslingen bridge in Germany. Uh, on the top right, you see the BIM model, uh, then converted into a numerical model. And on the left bottom, you see the reinforcement model. So you see very detailed, all reinforcing bars are considered. You can see the zoom or detail of the reinforcement above uh, sub the middle supports. And on the right, you see uh, the chloride concentrations on the top surface and on the bottom surfaces of the bridge. Different concentrations were taken into account. Now let's look at some results from the simulation. So the top left figure shows the chloride concentration at the depth of the reinforcement. So you can see nicely how these chloride concentrations at reinforcement depth is affected by the presence of cracks. At the bottom, you see the evolution of uh, reinforcement corrosion. The red area is a fully corroded cross-sectional area. The blue, uh, the blue color indicates uh, reinforcement without any corrosion. And again, you see mainly the effects of the cracks above the support where the corrosion is uh, fastest. Uh, well, say that we are considering time, the age from zero to 150 years. And on the top, so this is the simulation going from zero to 150 years. And on the top right, you see the cracking, the crack width. So again, you see that initially there were some micro cracks, but because the reinforcement corroded, the cracks opened more. And uh, this can be also seen on this bottom right uh, figure showing the reinforcement stress. It's clearly to see that because the reinforcement corrodes, the cross section area of the reinforcement is smaller. That's why we, in the end, obtain much higher reinforcement stresses. So, how do we apply it for structural assessment? So, what we do that at various times during all this. Uh, time-dependent analysis, we can perform a kind of virtual load of our structure, applying the design load combination and loading the structure up to failure. And then we can check what is the safety margin. So the blue line shows uh, the, 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 the load carrying capacity of the original bridge without any corrosion. And then we have results from 50 years, 100 years, 150. We can always compare the obtained loads with respect to dead load, live load, or ULS, which means the design load combination. And then to make some safety evaluation, we have to consider and take into account some probabilities uh, for of, uh, failure and reliability indices based on the loads. And we are using a global safety format from uh, FIB model code 2010, which 
which uh, defines uh, safety formats, requires to make two analyses, always one with uh, mean average values of uh, input parameters and the other one with characteristic values. And out of that, we can, using the ECOF method in the FIB model, we can calculate the design strength of the bridge. That's the red line. You can see that the life expectancy of this bridge is about uh, more than 100 years. So let me conclude. So we use the digital twin approach where we properly calibrated our numerical model based on advanced monitoring system enabling to, to detect uh, the vehicles with, uh, to detect the vehicles passing as well as the weight, which is uh, used for the model calibration. Then we use a nonlinear analysis, uh, taking into account the cracking to perform global assessment of our structures. And we use the durability model, which took into account also the crack, presence of cracks, uh, to estimate the corrosion uh, during the life of our structure. And we use it in, for this, uh, this kind of graph of service life predictions where we can consider the current age of the structure, which was about 40 years. And uh, then uh, with this approach, we were able to show that the structure uh, has a remaining life of about 50 to 60 years. So with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to questions or comments. Thank you and see you in the uh, Q&A section. Goodbye. Athena program produced by Chervenka company. You can find us via the website and download the program from it or on YouTube by name Chervenka Consulting or in Facebook by name Athena. Finally, we thank you for your attention and for any inquiries, please don't hesitate to contact us. Have a nice day. Bye bye.